Hey, what's up guys? Josh has Boots here and welcome back to another Digimon video. Uh, today I have another gameplay video from Locals. Uh, I think this matchup is very interesting actually, because on the left we have uh, Bloomlord, Hydramon, whatever you want to call it. And on the right we have uh, Stefan playing Aegis Dramon, who has been uh, uh, seen on the channel before playing Aegis Dramon as well. And why I think this matchup is particularly interesting is because... Um, basically these are like the same deck, right? Uh, the goal of the deck is relatively the same. Even though with the addition of Hydra um, on uh, the Blue Lord deck has a little bit more of a control aspect. But I think that Aegisdramon also has something like that because of uh, Aegisdramon's effect, right? Where if you play out the Digimon, then um, the Aegisdramon player can play out the Digimon as well, basically. Uh, but yeah, of course we know that Blue Lord is um, performing uh, pretty well in uh, recent tournaments. And Aegisdramon is uh, not, so we'll see how um, you know how that uh, turns out in this uh, particular match. Um, on the right side, we already do see Madoki ba Betamon having come down, which of course is a very uh, much like a hard counter against the Bloomlord deck. However, it is important that you uh, have some protection for it, especially against battle. So uh, pairing up with a blocker specifically is very nice because. <clears throat> Of the EX3 Pokemon, which you already see on the field, right? If it is suspended, you can suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. So it will, it's relatively easy to just run over the Madoki Betamon. So it is important to have like a blocker next to it. Or another Madoki Betamon, of course. Uh, for now, the Madoki definitely putting in work. There is a Tobiumon in the back. Um, which potentially could go up into a Metal Cedramon later. Uh, interestingly enough, we actually see uh, Stefan now evolve over the uh, Madoki Betamon. Even though there's double green memory boost on the on the opponent's field. But uh, I... Okay, yeah, I was about to say it's probably because either he has another Motoki Betamon or... Because he needs to start... Uh, he feels like he needs to start actually uh, doing something engine-wise. Uh, but I definitely think putting boost to 3 here is a little bit of a mistake with the, just the one Motoki Betamon. Because as you'll see, uh, now the Motoki Betamon is just going to be uh, get run over by uh, Sunflowmon in this case. And uh, with two green memory boost up, uh, that's going to be very, very rough. I felt like it definitely looked like um, Aegis from Mon or Stefan was in a good position here. But now um, it's looking not that way, basically. It's looking quite rough for him. We'll see Blossomon come down, I think. Oh, it's actually Argomon, so uh, you could say that's uh, slightly better even than, uh, than Blossomon. Now, yeah, with both the memory boosts uh, in play, it's very likely he's going to be able to go up into uh, something like Bloom Lordmon, which he does hit here, um, but apparently he already had it, so he's just uh, adding the uh, the BT9 Pokemon to his hand, which is definitely fair enough, because BT9 is basically a hard counter against the Aegisdramon deck anyway. Uh, but yeah, we'll see if he... Uh, I ex expect he has another Bloom Lordmon or a Hydramon that's going to be, out, uh, be able to out the Pokemon. Uh, the Bloom Lord definitely going to be able to do some damage here. He's going to be able to keep turn and then also gain piercing and uh, swing with 2000 DP more. Because he will have uh, two suspended Digimon. He will have three, but uh, you need two, four, six, you know, to gain the additional effects. So going to do two checks here into to Hammer Spark. It's Hammer Spark. So <laughs> that's pretty good for uh, for Stefan there. And now we'll see if maybe there is something uh, of play like go into uh, Play Showmon and then put. Metal Seedramon under the Waymon and then, uh, or under the, under Placemon and then go into Aegisramon. Uh, we actually see, uh, Regalucusmon. I'm not sure how you pronounce this, but this is like it, uh, shoots the sources of, uh, your opponent, Digimon. Yeah. And now, um,. Yeah, uh, then on the tech it says if your opponent has a Digimon without sources, you can play out the level 3 and the level 4, which you see here. We see the Crepmon and the Tobiumon, and then Crepmon. Uh, I think it gives jamming to uh, to one of the Digimon, which in this case is not relevant, but you can also put another Digimon from your hand under it as one of the sources, and we see uh, Abitron being put there, which is nice because it will trigger the... Um, the Digitama, and then we see Aegisramon coming down here, which brings out the AB, uh, the Abitramon, which then gives uh, Aegisramon blocker and uh, allows to suspend itself. So pretty, pretty strong turn there. Um, definitely, uh, you know, from going from the Rega Klusmon and then into the Aegisramon, very strong. 
<laughs> seems like the, the BT9 Pokemon came just a little bit too late. However, um, of course, the entire Bloom Lord field wasn't quite dealt with uh, there. So, you know, there's still a lot of opportunity for Bruce to uh, yeah, do a lot of stuff. Because as we all know, Bloom Lord doesn't need a lot of memory to do uh, a lot of plays. Especially with the memory boost, right? He will be able to do uh, do a lot here. So we see the Pokemon coming uh, coming down there, and uh, yeah, I assume he wants to go like Digisorb up into. Uh, okay, so he's suspending Kremlin with the the Pokemon. But yeah, I assume he wants to go Digisorb, yeah, into Blossomon exactly, and then go into something like Hydramon maybe to suspend uh, the Aegis Ramon. Something like that. And then since you will have a lot of uh, suspended uh, vegetation, etc. Uh, Digimon, it will also be really rough for Stefan to go uh, go aggro next turn. Okay, so Blue is going to swing here with 14k. Uh, two checks. He's going to allow that, not going to block that. Which is fair, right? Because he doesn't want to uh, lose out his Aegis from on there. It is interesting to note that since uh, Bruce did play at the Pokemon, uh, the BT9 Pokemon... Uh, that means that uh, usually Aegisramon would have been able to trigger its effect, but now it couldn't do that since the Pokemon was on the field. But yeah, we see Hydramon there suspend the Aegisramon, and he will gain 4 memory because um, he didn't have to pay anything because of the hidden potential, right? Because, like one of the best cards in the in the green deck, if not the best card. He's going to play out in that, another Digimon, the Pelmon this time. And he's going to add the glare is a little bit bad there. Uh, Pokemon BT9. Just in case, um, you know, the one that's on the field right now gets outed, I assume. In fact, he's just going to out himself by going to Sunflower. Oh, and that's fair, right? Because now he gets to play out the, the other Pokemon um, unsuspended, so it can't be attacked. And honestly, Stefan can only attack once anyway, because when he attacks, he's going to lose four memory. Because of all the suspended Digimon, right? So... Yeah, I don't really see Aegis Ramon getting back into this game with the one memory. But we'll see, maybe... Uh, Stefan comes up with some crazy uh, crazy ID. I <laughs> see a little sli sw uh, sleeve swap there. Probably the sleeve was damaged or something like that. So yeah, Aegis Ramon's going to attack. Then he's going to gain a bunch of memory with the Hydramon. And then, yeah, that's, the game is just over, right? Like, I don't think there exists anything in security that's going to... Uh, yeah, <laughs> to to be able to beat this. Yeah, we see the game. Like, maybe on this previous turn, Death Axe would have been uh, an option. I'm not sure. But even then, I don't think it would have mattered too much. Even though it would have been free, right? So, uh, I don't know. I think that was probably the only card that could have gotten him back into the game. But yeah, we didn't see it, and uh, Brunor took it. Which is a little bit... Um, to be expected, right? Broomlord is basically like a better Aegis from one deck. Even though I do really like the Aegis from one deck, I think it's um, it's not a, not as bad as a lot of people think. Uh, but it is if you brick really hard after doing the Mulligan, which we see here by just uh, playing a TK to a uh, pester, not even evolving into a rookie. Very unlucky there. And yeah, we uh... okay. Yeah, Broomlord definitely has a strong start there. Revealing Argo, Bloomlord, Sunflower, and Red Veggie. And he's going to add the uh, Bloomlord and the Sunflower. And the and just like that, um, Aegis Ramon's already super far behind, right? I'm going to play the Memory Boost to pass turn. I'm going to add another of the X3 Pokemon to the hand. Okay, so Stefan does pick up a Rookie here, which is nice. Go to Tobiomon. And going to Metal Seedra 1 to pass to 1. So that's actually quite strong because Metal Seedra, uh, for a Mega Seedra model, I should say, is one of the Digimon that really um, is one of the focal points of the deck, like in the early game anyway. Bruce is going to play down Mimi there, so he will also have 3 memory to work with each turn. And now, yeah, Mega Seedra 1 can come out and it can swing, but. Um, Oh, this is smart. Right? He actually pay plays to Crampmon first, since that is going to give the Mega Seedramon jamming, so he can swing relatively safely. Then bring out the Gomon 1 chest if it's played from the Digivolution card, you can draw two cards. And yeah, he's going to hit into the Hydramon there. Uh, and not get deleted because of Crapmon. And then uh, he falls into Tobiomon there. 
and it goes into Placeomon, which is going to um, also be able to play out Digimon, and I think I can put a Digimon in the sources as well if he wants to. Um, and it's going to be the Waymon, probably to set it up to play that out um, on a future turn, because it doesn't have any inheritable effect, so... Pretty impressive turn there for for Aegisdramon after the after that first turn just playing TK. Makes sense why he kept a hand, right? He probably had like uh, all the cards he wanted, and then he just was missing the rookie. And as soon as he picks it up, he could do like um, pretty pretty strong play. What's fun to note here is that the TK is actually a really good tamer here because it says if one of your blue Digimon is attacked, you can draw a card, which is definitely something that comes up in this matchup. Which, so that might be the reason why he's, he's on uh, on TK as a tamer instead of something like Davis. Even though Davis still, um, I know I feel like I probably would still play Davis, right? Just a consistency card and a really strong one at that. But yeah, Bloomer definitely going to have to uh, deal with quite a big board here. And potentially Aegis from on next turn. So Blossom is going to swing over Tobium on there. He's going to pop a boost. Go back to three. Play out Pelmon. And then uh, yeah, he hits uh, Bloom Lord again with the Pelmon. That's, <laughs> that's what you want to hit, right? You want to see the Bloom Lord so you can uh, add double cards uh, from the Pelmon on play effect. Because it's the only fairy in the deck, I think, at this point. So suspend one of his guys, he's going to gain 4 memory and unsuspend, and then he's going to be able to, um... Does he just not gain the memory here? Okay, so that's a little bit of a misplay, unless I'm missing some effect on the field. But I'm pretty sure Bruce should have gained 4 memory here. Uh, from the Blue Lord effect. When it's, uh, you know, for every suspended Digimon, or suspended vegetation, etc. Uh, so yeah, a little bit of a misstep there, I think. <laughs> Just imagine like how powerful this deck is, right? He misses gaining four memory, four memory, and he's still in such a commanding position. We do see another Mega Seedramon come down though, so and there is no uh, no Hydramon on the field, so you can actually uh, gain some advantage by swinging with it. But he's not gonna do that. He's just going to swing over the Pokemon with the Gomamon. Yeah, maybe if he doesn't have any follow-up, like, it doesn't really make sense to swing with the Mega Seedramon, right? Since he also can bring out a level uh, level 3 Digimon. So go to Spark, go to 1, play Ice Wall. To just protect himself a little bit, and then evolve into uh, King Waymon. And I think you can, says, like, on Evolve, you can play a level 3 Digimon uh, from the sources, but yeah, there isn't any. So he's just... I think setting up next turn to get the Aegis from one out, probably. He's going to tap the Mimi here, since Bloom Mordor doesn't field, which is level 5 or higher. Going to another Terrier Mon. Terrier Mon also quite a good uh, good card in this matchup, right? Uh, because we see that Aegis from one is playing both Blue Memory Boost and uh, Hammer Spark. He's going to attack security, lose 2 memory, and then the Pokemon is going to get leaded, uh, which is to be expected. And that's actually just, uh, that's gonna be the game. Yeah, pretty convincing win by a Bloom Lord there, uh, which was to be expected, but a little bit sad regardless. Uh, but yeah, except for that memory, uh, forgetting the memory game, game which did, didn't even end up mattering. Uh, yeah, very, very GG.